it's time for the word of the Lord. While I know this young man, and I do call myself a friend, I want to read his bio because I believe it is extensive. And when you have worked for it and you've earned it and you did it the right way, I believe people should know about it. So I would like to read this bio for our preacher this morning. This young man was born in New Haven, Connecticut, relocated and raised in Atlanta area since the age of 10. Started preaching at the age of 15. Licensed at the age of 19 at Clarkston First Baptist Church in Clarkston, Georgia. He holds a Bachelor's of Science from Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That was or he was ordained in 2010. Has a Master of Divinity from Mercer University in Atlanta. Currently, he serves as a chaplain captain in the United States Air Force stationed in Nebraska, United Kingdom, Northern California, and soon Antonio, San Antonio, Texas. Five years on active duty. He has joined the Church of God in Christ in November 2020, transferred his credentials, and he was in Brazil with Bishop Terence Rome. He is married to the Miss Jennifer Nicole. But this morning, he is our preacher. Glad tidings, I would ask that you would stand at this time and receive Chaplain Matthew Brantley all the way from his entire bio. Please, let's welcome him. Come on, Glad Tidings, let's welcome him now. Chaplain Matthew Bradley. For the power, that's a little high. <laughs> Of the Lord. Y'all play it, I'll pick it up. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Y'all sing it with me. For the power of the Lord is still the same. And you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Y'all play that and y'all encourage somebody and tell them for the power of the Lord is still the same. And you won't leave here like you came in Jesus name come on and put your hands together and praise the Lord amen you may be seated I'll find my voice amen <laughs> amen giving God praise uh, on today amen giving God praise on today for this opportunity to be in his house one more time. How many of y'all glad to be in the service one more time? Uh, thank you to Bishop Macklin and Lady Macklin for this opportunity again. It says a whole lot when somebody invites you back. Amen. So you know what that means. I need to preach short again so I can get invited back one more time. Amen. <laughs> Amen to Elder Macklin. Thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, I'm not big on bios, so that's why you got a bullet point bio. Amen. I don't never want to outshine Jesus. Amen. And to my wife who is here with me today, I owe her an apology. She had on this nice black dress with a bow on it. And I told her, ain't nobody dressing up today. <laughs> and here I come in and all y'all dressed up. <laughs> Amen. I do own a suit. So hopefully you'll still hear the word with me dressed down. Amen. Amen. The Sunday before Christmas. That's, that's what we're putting emphasis on today. The Sunday before Christmas. Amen. And I asked the Lord 
what should I share with the people of the Lord on the Sunday before Christmas? And then he led me over to uh, the Gospel of Luke. Luke, whose name means uh, light-giving or luminous. Not much is known of this Gentile author, but Paul is on record as referring to him as the beloved physician. Luke, uh, a man of learning and knowledge, was an exact observer. Because of his medical training, he was exact uh, and precise in everything that he did, and he was a faithful uh, recorder. To the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, uh, and John, more Matthew and Mark because they are part of the synoptic Gospels, uh, Luke has a more reliable account because he is a reliable historian with a literary background. He writes in the first chapter of his book to one by the name of Theophilus, whose name means love by God, lover of God, and friend of God. It's said that Theophilus was a Gentile believer, a Christian uh, of high rank, because he later says to the most excellent Theophilus, which gives him credentials as a Roman officer, and to whom Luke addressed in the first chapter of his gospel. He paid deference to Theophilus. But scholarship tells me that uh, the name suggests uh, that it was used by both Greeks and Jews, making it difficult to establish uh, Theophilus' ethnic identity, but to say that he was most likely a Gentile. Scholarship also suggests that it was a generic title, a way for Luke to address any interested but anonymous reader, a prototype to a larger audience of those who would read this book. I don't know about you, but why don't you look at your na neighbor and say, neighbor, good morning, Theophilus. <laughs> when Luke wrote this gospel, he was writing it to you and me. Do I have a witness? Amen. Y'all speak, I'll be out your way. A amen. A amen. In Luke's gospel, after he gives this grandiose introduction to Theophilus uh, as he records his writings. He opens up the gospel by calling one's name by the name of Zacharias, who was married to uh, Elizabeth. And they were both of the priestly tribe, Zacharias being of Abijah's tribe and Elizabeth being of the tribe of Aaron. They were both, both of the priesthood. And they understood the order of the day. But understanding the order of the day, they were also in a day when Herod the Great was on the throne. Herod was great for uh, building buildings, but he was known as a tyrant because he was known for killing those who were in his way. A study even suggests that he killed members of his own family. And isn't it like God to show out in the midst of disaster? Isn't it like God to show up when we have unfavorable people uh, on the throne? Isn't it like God to show up in the midst of a pandemic? because he's got something great to deliver to his people. The Bible says that they were both righteous before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord 
blameless. But then verse 7 says they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and they both were advanced in years. They were old. <laughs> the body couldn't do what it used to do. <laughs> but not only were they advanced in years, they prayed for something some time ago that had not come to pass. And like many of us, when we pray for stuff and God doesn't bring it to pass in our time, we don't think about it anymore. It's a thing of, of the past. And while I'm going on in life, while you're going on in life, we're still praying for stuff. Some stuff that God gives us and some stuff that God holds. But oh, thanks be to God for the prayers that we forgot about that is still on his list to deliver. They were advanced in years and Elizabeth was barren. Zacharias, who was of the priestly tribe, let it be known that in that day the priesthood was made up of 24 divisions. Abijah, who was the lineage of Zacharias, appears eighth on that list in the Old Testament. For Zacharias' names mean the Lord, his name means the Lord has remembered. Elizabeth, who was barren, her name means God is my oath, which means God is reliable. And so the Bible tells me that when man and woman are married, the two shall become one. And so because Zacharias' name means the Lord has remembered, and Elizabeth's name means God is my oath, if I put the two together, I hear the Lord saying God remembers what he told you. It wasn't a good thing to live in a patriarchal, patriarchal society as a woman and not bear your husband any children. You were considered as low in the eyes of society. Yet God was working something for the greater good. Y'all remember Abraham and Sarah? Uh-huh, God gave them the same promise. And Sarah laughed at God. And the Lord said, is there anything? What my Bible read is that? Too hard for the Lord. No, sir. It doesn't matter how old you are. What station in life you may be. If God said it, he's able to do just what he said. Hallelujah. Now, I said there were 24 divisions of the priesthood. And there were over 20,000 priests who had to wait in line for their time to go into the temple and offer incense. The Bible says that they cast lots to determine whose turn it was to go into the tabernacle and offer incense upon the altar. Oh, Zacharias got lucky because this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Now, I don't know if he prayed for this, but God granted it so, because he knew there was a prayer in queue, and he was waiting for the right time to tell him. Zacharias 
went into the tabernacle to offer incense. And while he was in there with his eyes closed, offering up prayers to the Lord on behalf of the people, on the right side of the tabernacle, where the table of showbread was, there was an angel that scared the living. stuff out of them do I have a witness and the angel says to Zechariah don't what my Bible read is that don't fear don't be afraid why for your prayer is heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call his name John. But not only will she bear you a son, not only will you call him John, but you will have joy and gladness. And this ain't just for your house, but many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. And he shall not drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord, their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, how shall I know? I'm an old man. Give me a sign that I can hold on to before I check out of here. God spoke some things in your life that you may have prayed for or didn't pray for, but you like Zechariah's too busy looking for a sign, you're going to miss the blessing of God. But the providence of God says that in spite of your doubt, I'm still going to do what I said I was going to do. Yeah, Zacharias, because you didn't believe me, you're going to be mute. You're not going to be able to say anything when you walk out of here. And the folks outside was wondering what was taking him so long. What's taking him so long? This is ritual. We know how long this is supposed to take. But bro man was taking a little too long, offering up prayers. Don't he know we got to get something to eat? Don't y'all talk about me. We talking about Zacharias. When Zacharias walked out of the temple, they were waiting for him to give the priestly blessing found in Numbers. Where Moses says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Zacharias wasn't able to say it. Because his mouth was closed. Instead, he was trying to make gestures to explain what happened in the temple. And they said, oh, he must have saw something too great to talk about. Because his mouth is mute. Do I have a witness? Yeah. He couldn't say anything. So what happened after he got done? Fulfilling his priestly duties, the Bible says he went back home. And so after he went home, the angel, Gabriel, came a second time. But this time he came to a virgin girl by the name of Mary. Luke chapter 1 verse 26 says, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee 
named Nazareth. There was nothing special, nothing significant about Nazareth. They didn't even have any good water in Nazareth. But yet God saw fit to send an angel to the town of Nazareth to find a virgin girl to bring forth the savior of the world. A virgin girl who was engaged to Joseph. And the mere fact that she would be uh, in the family way without having relations with the one she was betrothed to. Death was the penalty if society had a found out. Do I have a witness? But the angel went and found her and says rejoice highly favored one the Lord is with you blessed are you among women but when she saw him she was troubled and considered what man uh, what manner of greeting this was then the angel said to her the same thing he said to Zacharias don't be afraid Mary's response, he said, don't be afraid because you have found favor. I don't want to leave that out. You have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth the son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I don't know no man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. The glory cloud will overshadow you. I don't know about you, but when I'm under the glory cloud, there ought to be some things taking place under the glory cloud. Something that doesn't take place any other time, but under the glory cloud. There ought to be a conception of expectation under the glory cloud. There ought to be the anticipation of what is on the way under the glory cloud. He will do exceedingly abundantly above all that I'm able to ask or think under the glory cloud. Anybody in here under the glory cloud? You waiting on God to do something? Are you in a position to receive it under the glory cloud? Don't worry, I'm getting to my topic in a few minutes and then we're going to praise God and get out of here. Amen. Hallelujah. You will be overshadowed, therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Then it says, now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren. The Bible says that Elizabeth hid herself for five months because she was advanced in years. And we didn't know if the pregnancy was going to hold. So it's best to stay out of folks' way to keep you from miscarrying the blessing that God has birthed in you. A lot of us, God has birthed something in us, but we got to run and tell it before it's time. causing a miscarriage to take place. But Elizabeth hid herself for five months. And when the angel showed up to Mary, she was already in her sixth month. Do I have a witness? So the angel lets Mary know these things because it was too great for her to hold. Mary needed to go tell somebody. <laughs> you can't tell everybody everything that the Lord is doing in your life. 
you got to find somebody that's on the same level with you or who God leads you to because we should rejoice when others rejoice. We should sorrow when others sorrow. Do I have any believers in the house that know the word of God, that live on the word of God, that stand on the word of God? Hallelujah. Luke says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. And here, here's my text and I'm closing. Then Mary said, behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Y'all hold on to that. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Verse 39 says, Now Mary arose in those days and went into a hill country with haste to a city of Judah. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm finished. Verse 38. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary arose, got up, and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah. Uh, I want to call on the prophets this morning and tag this sermon, and y'all excuse me for referencing them. There was a hip hop group in 1997 called Freak Nasty. And there was a song that said, when I dip, you dip, we dip. That's the thought for the morning. How you got that preacher? And the angel departed from her. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city called Judah. When I dip, you dip, we dip. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah. When I dip, you dip, we dip. Y'all ain't got it yet. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary arose in those days and went into a hill country with haste to a city of Judah. When I dip, you dip, we dip. Now that you got the report, get up and go find a place to praise him. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. I don't know about you, but it's the Sunday before Christmas. I don't need no gifts under the tree because over 2,000 years ago, the angel found a little girl, a virgin girl by the name of Mary, and the spirit overshadowed her. And when she said that according to your word, that's when conception happened. Is there anybody in here that can say according to your word for God to birth in you what you've been praying for? Hold on. Don't give up what you're praying for. It's on the way. It may not come today. It may not come tomorrow. But hold on. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy. Anybody been praying for joy? Anybody been praying for peace? It's on the way. According to your word. You've been praying for a long time. 
But I encourage you today, don't give up. Don't give in. Hold on just a little while longer. Do I have a witness? It's coming. It's on the way. Daniel prayed for 21 days. And the angel said, God heard your prayer. But the prince of Persia held up your blessing. And I want you to know there's some things holding up your blessing. You might need to give up control. You might need to give up the man. You might need to give up the woman. You might need to give up the drugs. You might need to give up the alcohol. You might need to give up the disobedience. You might need to give up the lying. You might need to give up the stealing. You might need to give up the backbiting. You might need to give up the cheating. Whatever it is, offer it to the Lord. Greater is on the way. Do I have a witness? If there's any believers in here expecting God to do great things, find you three people, move out of your place, make haste, and go praise Him. When I dip, you dip, we dip. 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 Now go run and praise him.
All over the building. All over the building. All over the building. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Let's lift him up. Let's lift him up. Let's lift him up. Let's lift him up. Oh, come. Oh, come. Oh, come. Oh, come. Let's bless him, let's bless him, let's bless him. this morning. I know we had some alarm clocks on, but Lord, if you didn't allow us to wake up, we wouldn't even be able to hear the alarm clock. And for this, we say thank you. God, every home that's represented here, every man, woman, boy, girl, we ask you now, God, that you will go into every house, every house in the name of Jesus. God, we don't know what to do but to call on you to help us. We've got some family issues. We've got family issues. We've got sons. We've got daughters. We've got husbands. We've got wives. And God, some of us, we don't even know what to pray anymore. But oh, Father, we stretch our hands to you. Oh, 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 oh. We stretch our hands to you. We ask to you, God, in the name of your son, Jesus, that you would hear our humble cry. That you would hear our humble cry. You're listening to us, oh God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a loving God. We serve a compassionate God. All oh, his arms are around us. He's holding us. He's holding us up. Yes, we're walking, but God is taking that step before we even lift our hands, before we even lift our feet. God, you see our sons. You see our sons. You see our daughters. You see him, Lord. Father God, the name of Jesus, draw him to your throne of grace. God, there's some situations in our families that need to be turned around. I know they did wrong. I know they messed up. You know it. We know it. But oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Save them, Lord. Save them, Lord. Save them, Lord. 
Save them, Lord. It's your son. It's your daughter. Save them, Lord. Save them, Lord. I don't care if they're in the building. Save them, Lord. Save them, Lord. Save them, Lord. Deliver them, Lord. Deliver them, Lord. He did it for you. Deliver them, Lord. He saved you. Save them, Lord. He healed you. Save them, Lord. Heal them, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. God, you and your word say that everything to give thanks. So, God, everything that we've been praying for, everything that we've asked God for, right now we just going to have a thank you praise. Come on, saints of God. Thank him. You said give thanks. You said give thanks. You said and everything give thanks. Everything give thanks. Everything. You don't have to like it. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to figure it out. But tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Let the church say amen. Amen. Come on, everybody. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say Everybody say amen. Please be seated, everybody. What a tremendous service this morning. Wonderful, wonderful service today. Absolutely great. Let's give the Lord a hand praise, everybody. We've been blessed today from the beginning of our service up until this very moment. Did you enjoy the word of the Lord today from our chaplain? He didn't have his Air Force uniform on today, but he was flying high. And I tell you, he has blessed our hearts today. Thank you very much, and good morning to you. It's so good to see you, too. Hi. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Want to say good morning? Oh, yeah. All right. Amen. That's good. That's good. Very good. I want you to hear the wife of our, our chaplain who spoke to us today, and uh, Sister Jennifer, and uh, they make a wonderful couple, and uh, it's just so good to see them. Every time we see them, they're smiling and happy. I said, man, what a wonderful couple. Um, yes, he's a, a chaplain in the Air Force and all of those distinguished uh, qualities and achievements he has had, 
but he's married to a wonderful young lady who's just as accomplished as he is. And uh, she is a uh, licensed uh, attorney and uh, worked in so many different areas. And today, in addition to being married to him, she also works for the, is it Fairfield? Fairfield Police Department. But she is a show enough attorney. I want her to come and have words. Come on, let's welcome her. Good morning, Glad Tidings. I think this is the first time I have been before you. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> and so it is the Sunday before Christmas. It's all, all, also coming up on a new year. Um, and for me, that brings to mind a word. We had our spelling bee this morning, and my word is timing. T-I-M-I-N-G. Um, and I think today's message was a reminder that God's timing is not our timing. And so we need to remember that. Remember when it seems like he is silent, he is still there. He's speaking even in the midst of the silence. And we have to remember that. Continue rejoicing him in the in-between time. Continue adoring him and praising him and thanking him in the meantime. And when he's ready to move, when he's ready to birth that blessing in us, we have to be ready to move. So remember that as we go into Christmas next week, as we go into the new year, God has a blessing for you. He has a gift for you that he is birthing in you in his time. Amen. 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 Thank you, church.